If you have a two-door coupe, you really should protect your interior with a windshield sunshade. I've come back to my vehicle after lunch to an interior of over 120 degrees. That's not good for any kind of fabric. Cracking a window helps, but nothing is as good as shading the car. If you don't, anticipate door panels with sun blisters, rubbed off texture, because heat does terrible things to your car over time. Life persuaded me to make this video because my Perfect Fit prototype from 2015 was badly deteriorated and I was recently in San Diego and saw some really nice cars with poor fitting sunshades. We can do better. Let's get started. First, measure your windshield from outside. My 2015 prototype was measured from the inside and not a perfect fit. This measures 24 by 55 inches tallest to widest. Next, if you have butcher or crepe paper, tear off a large sheet to match your width. I taped together grocery bags for my template, but newsprint, wrapping paper, even an old shower curtain could work. Place your template material on your car. I'm lucky because my wipers can hold the material down without obstructing my guideline. I noticed that my template sagged in the middle a little, which fit the opening better, so I turned it upside down. You need the material to hold still while you cut. So make a couple of loops with tape and just press the material into the loop stuck on the glass. This will make a satisfactory hold so you can cut off the excess. Trust in the template isn't slipping. The paper is flat while the windshield is curved. To get a good fit, crease the paper and tape down the excess template material. Every vehicle that I can think of since 1988 has two conspicuous lines around the windshield, a dotted line and a solid line. If you trace the dotted line, you will cut the template too narrow, and if you cut the solid line, perfection will be yours. Cutting through solid paper means you have to lift the paper occasionally to see your line. If you cut too much, don't sweat it, just fill in with some tape and move on. The center of the sunshade, where it meets up with the rear view mirror, can be the most difficult. I cut exactly to the line, then decided later to cover everything in the middle with an additional half inch of shade material. I just made a mental note of that for the adjustment, and I'll fix it later. You must keep a steady hand when cutting around your windshield wipers. Do not cut the rubber blades, or it will ruin your day. The round corners are a little hard to cut. Keep a steady hand and make a natural arc with the blade. You'll see here, I check fitment from the inside. If it's awful, you can always start over with a new batch of paper or grocery bags. I'm actually very pleased with this result. Now, roll up the template while removing the tape loops and get ready to cut out your new sunshade. I picked up this small car, one size fits all, 28.5 inches by 63 inch sunshade from AutoZone on sale for $9.99. Make room to trim your sunshade. Unfold the sunshade and place it on firm, workable surface. I like how firm the material is and the general build quality of the sunshade. While this thing gets taped down and traced with a sharpie, let me tell you what's coming up on this channel so you can decide if you would like to subscribe. Clearing that engine light, save big bucks changing your wheel size, and reinventing and modernizing the center console. A ride pimp you won't want to miss. While you might not need or like all of the upcoming episodes, I'm sure one of those should be a benefit to you. Hit the bell to be alerted to when the next video drops. Grab a sharp pair of scissors and trim away excess sunshade material. I'll save the Velcro strap that helps contain the shade for the tips and tricks section at the end of this video. While you trim away the extra, be conscious that the line you are creating is smooth, not jagged. It will help lay down your edge material later. We're going to use gray hockey tape for our edging material, or what is known as binding. If you want to pick up some legitimate material from Michael's or a fabric store, you can. You could also use white athletic tape, but it will get dirty. Black tape will just be a source of heat in the sun and should be avoided. 
The main clip on this video is only about five and a half minutes long. If you want to stick around for some additional tips and tricks, I sure would appreciate it. You will simply outline the outside of the sunshade with cloth tape. While the cloth tape is not as thick as the original binding material, it is pretty close. The goal of the tape, like the binding material, is to hold the thin plastic foil against the bubble insulation inside the shade. To do this, fold the tape over the edge of the shade with 50% on one side and 50% on the other. Do your best to keep the overlap equidistant to make a nice finished edge. You really want to do this with as few pieces as possible. However, you don't want to work with super long lengths that are prone to being wrinkled. When you come to an abrupt edge like this one, sometimes it's just easier to fold the tape over on top of itself and cut it to start again. Check your fitment. If things don't fit perfectly now, go ahead and trim them up a bit. If you have to cut a little hockey tape, no big deal. Hockey tape is cheap, you got more on the roll. Well, there you have it. What normally costs up to $70 or more for a direct fit sunshade is only $9.99 plus tax and a little work. A very small investment to keep your interior cool and in like new condition. If this helped you out today, please like the video. If you think you might like my other ideas or handiwork, hit subscribe. Comments are always appreciated. Tips and tricks are up next if you're into extra credit. Okay, tip number one is that you're going to need some of this backing, some of this um, edging that goes around the previous sunshade. Simply attach it to another piece of hockey tape, just like this. Okay, now you can hand stitch that, but that will be kind of a pain in the neck. I think tip number two is pretty obvious. If you want this sunshade to last, go ahead and put a stitch all the way around. With everything stitched up, that'll be a long-lasting sunshade for us. My third and final tip is to get a convenient storage spot somewhere in the vehicle, easy for you to grab. I found with the crossfire right here next to the passenger seat works very well. If you have a sports car like a Mustang, or a Nissan 300ZX, putting it directly behind the passenger seat is probably a pretty good fit until you pop that seat forward and somebody steps on it, but you'll have to deal with that when that happens. I had the Crossfire come with a large enough bungee storage bin here along the passenger side of the center console. Uh, we'd be able to put the sunshade there. This, however, is not large enough, but we can make one which will be the topic of another video. Oh, bummer, look at that. This episode's over. Hey, I've got a whole bunch more uploaded to my page. Why don't you stop on by my YouTube channel and take a look? Thanks for watching.